they're here. So, with the recent um, uh, success of my 3D printing company from home, Jinxbot 3D Printing, um, and you can see some of my other blog posts on my website, jinxbot.com, uh, I'm happy to say that I finally earned enough money to go ahead and buy myself a second MakerBot. Really excited that uh, an investment that I've done has taken it this far where I can actually say that I've earned not only enough money to pay for it, but then uh, a whole other printer. So I'm really excited to then take this, reinvest in Jinxpot 3D printing with newer brand new technology and really exciting stuff that now uh, that the package has arrived, we'll go ahead and dig into them and see what we got. So we have our first package here. I went ahead and opened these up already just a little bit. And the first thing we got is a couple of spools of filament. We have orange, MakerBot True Orange, the Cool Gray, very popular with the customers, and the True Blue. Again, not so popular with the customers, but I love printing in this blue color for some reason. So, got some of that. And I've got myself an additional Smart Extruder Plus. So in one of my other videos, I did an unboxing the Smart Extruder Plus and a test of it. Um, since then, I've been having it run for, uh, I want to say around like 300 hours or so, maybe more. And it has not failed once. Um, I've had tons of prints come out fantastic with this. A um, lot of really good um, feedback from my customers. And it's a workhorse. I mean, I've put the, the my first Smart Extruder Plus through uh, grueling tests and uh, they've all my prints have passed with flying colors and I'm really excited to get myself a spare it's always good to have a spare um, you know if something does go wrong for whatever reason some overheating some jamming even though that hasn't happened yet uh, it's always good to especially when you have customers in mind to have a spare that way if you're printing late at night it's midnight all of a sudden you hear something on your printer and you're like oh no what happened you go out there and you find that your extruder needs uh, changing or maybe you're in the middle of a 12-hour print and um, <laughs> you don't want to start over. Um, being able to hot swap your printer, which is actually something pretty specific to the MakerBot brand, is really extraordinarily um, great to have. Really the only um, thing that I've had to scrap is my rafts and I've been keeping those rafts and then one day after this is paid for itself, my next investment is going to be a um, filament recycler. So I don't know what I'm gonna get yet. Uh, I'm gonna do maybe a review on the different options, go through the process, and then maybe we'll make some filament together later. But, so that's my Smart Extruder Plus, and that's my plug for that. Um, again, a really great addition to the MakerBot family, and I'm glad to have done it. So here's the MakerBot. Very excited, so this came in not a, an additional outer package, but I think it survived the trip really well. MakerBot has really good packaging. They have a lot of really good padding inside, and the box is, again, really sturdy. So let's go ahead, open this up, and go through this journey. So similar to the MakerBot 5th Gen's big box, um, it has kind of the storage for some of the components up top. Um, we have here, very nicely done. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Extra spool of filament, that's awesome. So you can get started printing right away. And that's killer. An additional Smart Extruder Plus, that is really exciting. So now I have a whole arsenal of uh, Smart Extruders. If anything were to go wrong, there's not anything that would stop me from printing or print. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that um, a little bit in depth later when we're setting it up. And of course we have the power cable and the data cable. So one thing I would like to point out about the data cable is with um, MakerBot's latest software release, uh, MakerBot Desktop, um, as well as the previous release for MakerBot Print, their other slicing software, their kind of first gen software, um, their, the need to actually plug your computer in or your printer into your laptop is becoming a thing of the past, much like wireless printers today. Um, you have wireless printers that, um, you know, print anywhere as long as you're within the same network. So these printers now um, can all be networked together. I have a MakerBot 5th Gen printing something right now for a customer. And now I have this guy. So I'll be able to put this on my network, be able to control both of those printers within the same software and have, um, you know, a whole <laughs> arsenal of printing power at my hands. 
um, which is great because then you know I don't have to have a with the setup right now and what I'm starting to go away from is um, I have a, a laptop kind of one of my old laptops that I've repaired and hooked up to be my dedicated printer laptop um, with this new networking bit I've actually had no need to use that laptop in the last few weeks or so so uh, I'm looking forward to maybe repurposing that uh, laptop for something else and just using my main everyday laptop to be my printer hub. It's got more processing power and a, a lot more graphics um, oomph. So it really should be my main um, laptop that I'm using for this anyway. So I'm very excited to then be able to plug this right into its kind of own little ecosystem and start printing from there. We also have our quick start guide and here in the top, that's pretty neat. And Let's see, get your, get support, register, get support, register your device. And what it's, let's see in here, MakerBot filament, how to, your quick start guide, take it out of the box. Put in some filament, start printing. Pretty straightforward. So we can go over that as well, I'm sure. MakerBot has all of these resources online as well. So we have that top portion, and now the piece de resistance. I love the, the packaging design. Uh, I went to Cal Poly and my um, major was industrial technology and my minor was in packaging. So uh, my wife uh, laughs, but every time I <laughs> open up a new package, I'm like, ooh, look at the packaging detail. Like, great, let's toss it. There are two sides, and again, just to make sure everything stays in place, very well thought out, very good design, making sure that comes. And we have. Stuff to base plates down there. You know, an idea I had for putting these boxes and these packaging to good use is to use the box as a um, as the basis for a soundproof box. So, what I want to do eventually is take a box like this, um, wrap it in some Luon or some very light uh, plywood, and maybe put in some um, soundproofing foam. I'm cutting maybe a hole in the front so it kind of latches forward so I can soundproof the box. But one of the claims to fame of this printer is that it is going to be um, a heck of a lot quieter. So we'll um, put that to the test maybe in a future video and see what the deal is. Um, another advantage of making maybe making a box like that is the additional um, uh, environmental controls that it would provide. So. Um, no crosswinds, no, um, you know, I can keep the, the heat temperature at a very specific other than it just being out and about, as well as uh, soundproofing aspects. But then again, you'll also have a portability. Um, so these printers are great, but you know, there's not really a specific handle for these printers. They're mo mostly supposed to be on your desktop, sit there, and that's it. Um, if you have the need to take this around, I um, am starting to do some uh, exhibitions of 3D printing technology, especially through my company, Jingspot 3D Printing. Um, and I've gotten a lot of requests to bring the printer out and about. So instead of, you know, um, uh, unplugging it from where it is and then finding the box, uh, unfolding it and putting in all the cushions and putting it there, it'd be great to just keep that box uh, or keep the printer inside the box um, and then maybe just unplug it and then bring it to where it needs to be. So maybe that's in a future video as well. That is all for tomorrow, but today is about the printer. All right. So my first impression is that it's very clean, very nice, very excited. It's plastic out of the way. We have some packaging security features that we want to make sure that we take off before we start engaging in printing. So we have this guy right here, but you know what? Just because I did it for the other printer doesn't mean it's gonna be the same. Let's go ahead and give a brief look over for this printer. So we have the foam here. So lift accessory plus, beautiful. Remove this foam. Let's look at it's taped there. So let's remove that. Just 
kind of wiggles and slides right out. That's great. And we have um, removing the clips from the belt and the rod. Great. We have one clip right here. Just kind of snaps off there so that's clipping the belt in place that's just right here to work at it just a little bit but it came off and we have one and the rod over here beautiful so this I see was also attached to this Teflon tubing. The Teflon tubing goes feeds straight into the Smart Extruder and would feed kind of looking just like this. It was um, attached here in this portion and um, I think that was just to make sure that the tube didn't go anywhere. So that's fine that it comes loose. You can see the other end is just attached right here and you can see where you would put in your MakerBot filament. Now I'm a little bit more unfamiliar with the minis um, but I'm assuming that it's mostly the same. And we have a warning sticker here that says, only use genuine MakerBot filament. So use only make genuine MakerBot filament. Take that off. Beautiful. All right. All right, uh, let's see. Lift out a box, remove foam, remove clips and belt from rod. It looks like there's two, but I don't see two. I do not see two. So it looks like there was just one in this direction. It looked like there was two there, but it looks like there's only one. And that one looks like this. Insert the spool. Make sure that it goes through the filament guide tube. That's this Teflon tube here. And then plug into power and power on. Connect to a computer using the USB and open up the MakerBot app. That's killer. Well, you know, let's uh, transfer this to my um, quite messy desk and let's get a test print going. Okay, so I found a nice little space on my desk just above and uh, I have my little workstation down here. Um, so we're going to plug it in plug it into the laptop, make sure it recognizes the different build, the different thing. That's probably going to be the only time that I have to have it plugged in, um, if at all. And I'm going to attach the smart extruder, load in some filament. With that sound, it sounds like they are, it's now fully turned on, the MakerBot. MakerBot's little sounds, they kind of speak to you, sing to you. Some of the other new features that you'll see is this build plate. So this is a specialized build plate um, that apparently doesn't need any blue tape. Um, usually with a MakerBot 5th Gen or other MakerBots or even 3D printers in general, some sort of bed adhesion assistance is needed and that can be through um, build tack or painters tape or a number of different things. Painters tape for me has worked uh, really well, I haven't had any trouble with it um, and uh, works extraordinarily well with PLA and I guess with this new build plate design that it's become unnecessary. Calibration. Okay, I've loaded the filament and now it's going through the load sequence and it's extruding now the change from gray to orange, so I'm going to hit OK. Uh, here's, the, here's the transition, probably let it go a little bit too long, but when a, an extruder is new I always like to make sure that um, the process is going well by extruding just a little bit more than necessary. Okay, so everything seems in order. I have my filament in place. I have my filament loaded just in the back, as you can see. And now we're gonna go ahead and start our print. All right, so I have selected a, um, a model I've designed myself. It's actually 
the 3D object in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that comes down from the sky in that futuristic looking place. And I went ahead and recreated that design in 3D and I'm going to head, uh, go ahead and print it. So uh, first thing I gotta do is load up the filament. I'm gonna choose orange because why not? And then once we'll uh, start printing, I'll go ahead and um, uh, so I'm just going to go through the slicing, making sure my 3D model is going from a 3D solid object down all the way to its individual layers that will make it up as it goes, as it builds upwards. Uh, it's sliced. I can, you know, I am going to kind of zoom in here just a little bit. Can you see there? You can't really. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the build is going to look okay by looking at the individual layers that they're going to print within the software first. Make sure I catch any um, snags or overhangs. Uh, this is a really simple design, so I don't think any of that's going to happen, but uh, it's always good just to look. And plus, I kind of like the way it looks as it builds upwards. It kind of looks like a cat scan. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit print and we'll be good to go. Okay, looks like it's starting to go. It's gonna raise the build plate to its height. If this is anything like the fifth gen, it'll find the center point. Some basic calibration. Might need to adjust the Z-axis offset just a little bit, bring it up just a, a hair. But unlike the fifth gen, fifth gen draws the line this way um, to get essentially the, the filament flowing. This one, it prints back, back that way. I'll bring you up. Here you can see it's starting to print the raft. And then this is what I was referring to here. It's a little dark, I apologize, but uh, that's the. So. Dark in my apartment. Cool. We'll check back in uh, as the progress continues. Alright, so the print has finished and it came out very well. Here it is. The. Um, shape from the beginning of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure kind of comes down like that. Pretty neat. So uh, I think it turned out really well. It was very clean, um, you know, really good detail, really good resolution uh, as MakerBot has really good quality in, in their products. Uh, I expect nothing less. And, um, you know, let's see how the next few days of printing uh, take off and uh, really excited to um, again expand my my MakerBot family and try to um, expand my capacity for my customers Jinxbot 3D printing and being able to take in more orders and we'll uh, try to build a business and take it from there. Thanks.